right, uh, back to the floor is yours. Thank you so much. And um, thank you everyone for joining um, the session today. Um, it's been a fantastic week. And um, yeah, I'm really grateful to everyone that's been involved in OE Global um, uh, uh, this year. So as um, Willem uh, said, my name is Beck Pitt. I'm based at the Open University in the UK, and I'm going to be talking today about um, co-creation at a distance, remixing the Creative Commons certificate um, for Myanmar. So what am I going to be talking about? First of all, I wanted to give you a bit of an introduction um, to the TIDE uh, project and um, what we're trying to achieve. Um, you may, if you were around uh, the conference earlier in the week, have caught Andy Lane and Bobo the Wins presentation, um, colonizing the curriculum, um, which had loads of um, just fantastic kind of overview of the project um, and what we're trying to do um, and some of um, the issues kind of around that. Um, I'm also gonna talk a little bit about openness um, in TIDE um, before I go on and talk about uh, what we're actually doing um, for uh, in terms of developing a Creative Commons course um, from the CC certificate um, for the Myanmar context. And then finally, I'll kind of go on and talk about um, where next really and next steps, because as will become clear, um, this is very much a kind of ongoing um, process and something that we're um, currently um, uh, still working on. So let's start off by project aims. Um, so TIE stands for Transformation by Innovation in Distance Education. We're a UK aid funded project and we're part of the SPHERE program. So um, SPHERE is Strategic Partnerships for Higher Education, Innovation and Reform. And um, uh, the project began in uh, February 2018 with around three and a half, four year uh, long project. So we're currently due to finish um, in September, 2021. We're very much focused um, on sustainable development goals, particularly SDG four um, around quality education. And we also have a very specific um, focus around environmental science. Um, this is a new discipline, um, an emerging discipline in Myanmar. Um, and of course, Myanmar is very much um, a country uh, which is affected by climate change. It's in the top three countries um, which are uh, most vulnerable uh, countries um, in terms of climate change. So the aim of the project, um, which involves um, ourselves, the Open University, but also um, universities in Manchester, universities of Oxford, uh, Irrawaddy Policy Exchange in Yangon, and then also um, Myanmar Partners, that's Yad and Arvon, University, uh, Yangon University of Distance Education, UD, and Yangon will kind of bring obviously different strengths um, uh, to the project. Um, but the overall aim of the project is in to increase the quality of distance education and result in more employable um, graduates. And we're working with around 40 universities and colleges across Myanmar um, in order to um, achieve uh, this, this aim. Um, as Andy mentioned in the presentation on Monday, um, Distance education is um, really uh, very much a large part of um, HE in, in Myanmar. It's about 60% of, um, uh, and, it, and the activities of the project and the focus on distance learning um, will uh, hopefully benefit more than half a million um, students. Just very briefly, I wanted to give you the overview of the project, um, just to show you where this work really fits in with what we're trying to do um, overall. So we have kind of three strands um, to project activity. One of them is kind of building staff capacity. You can see um, on the green, um, on, on the left-hand side of the slide. Um, the second around enhancing programs to do with media production, um, student capabilities, um, uh, and so on. And then finally, also around strengthening um, distance education HE systems, so a focus around digital strategy and change management. So there's lots of different activity um, happening across the project. And um, this is only um, what I'm talking about today is only a very small um, part of um, part of what happen what's happening on TIDE. And um, the kind of remixing of the Creative Commons certificate, which sits actually as part of our master training program, um, which is kind of four courses that we're offering um, to uh, tied universities, people that, uh, um, people that are involved uh, in the project kind of sits um, under the first strand around building capacity and building on the work that we've already um, done with colleagues um, in Myanmar. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when we talk about openness, um, uh, 
in tide what do we mean um and this is really just to give you a little bit of background and show you how central kind of open education and oer um is uh to the project um we're very much it's very much about kind of sharing um, and listening and learning from each other um it's not about us kind of coming in and saying you have to kind of do things um, this particular way. Um, it's very much about um, listening and um, trying to better understand the context, which if you're in Andy's uh, presentation earlier in the week, um, uh, Myanmar is obviously quite um, a unique uh, uh, and very different context than, than the one, um, for example, uh, uh, where I'm based in the UK or, or other places. Um, you know, obviously Myanmar has been quite isolated for a number of decades, um, you know, and the way that education um, uh, has um, has been run a uh, very centralized approach that's gradually changing, but obviously you know it is very different to the the context that that um, that um, um, we're perhaps usually used to working in. So it's very much about listening and learning from our colleagues um, uh, in Myanmar. We have a kind of aim in the project to produce around 400 hours worth of open educational resources as well. So that's kind of built in, as I'll show you in a minute, to the project. Uh, we release all of our assets um, or, uh, for the project on open licenses so that they can be reused and adapted and also used um, for people to cascade um, and share at their universities um, as well. Um, so uh, in Myanmar um, it's it's uh, people are taught um, in English as well. So um, uh, there's also that kind of angle um, to things. We're also working with private and public um, organizations within Myanmar as well um, to kind of um, uh, as part of uh, the project and some of the pilot activity that we're involved in. Um, and then there's also the co-creation aspect and I'll come on and talk a little bit about that in a moment. So just very briefly, this slide, <laughs> I'm going to show you this slide really um, just to show you how central um, OER development um, and open education is to the project. Um, this shows you um, uh, is related to the capacity building element of um, the project and it shows um, basically a two year cycle um, where pre COVID we were working um, with uh, a group of universities, so you can see on the left we have 10 universities that we started working with in 2018 for a two year period um, initially. Um, and that two year program was based and structured around residential schools kind of webinars, online courses between them, um, both for academics and for um, ICT librarian and support staff. And then you can see through the middle, we have OER development. So throughout the whole of this two year kind of period, um, as well as the kind of sessions around um, open licensing and kind of practical um, kind of things, we're also kind of working with people and people are working with each other at their universities to um, develop uh, OER. Okay, so moving on um, to uh, talk a bit more about um, the uh, Creative Commons remix um, that, that we're in the process of, of doing as part of the master training programme. So besides this being part of um, what we're kind of offering um, to people, um, why would we want to remix it? I don't know how familiar folks are um, in the audience with um, uh, the Creative Commons certificate, um, but we obviously we wanted to kind of remix it for a number of different reasons. The main one being, of course, context. Um, and fundamentally as well, um, there is a big change in copyright law in Myanmar um, that is, is in the process of happening. So in May 2019, um, a new copyright law uh, was enacted and this was um, replacing a copyright law that's over 100 years old one that um, kind of came in um, during the British colonial period in 1914. Obviously that's kind of very much out of date when you think of what's happened um, since then and in terms of um, it just not really being enforceable. So there's a new copyright law kind of working its way um, through the system um, and that has quite stiff penalties for people that um, uh violate the the, the law um, there's a two-year transition period but obviously that has huge implications for um uh he and um what's happening currently in higher education so we wanted to kind of include um kind of information um around that um there's also kind of 
obviously the opportunity to include me and my colleagues in co-creation of the course. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, we also knew um, that people um, seem to be very interested or quite interested in Creative Commons and the work that we've done previously with people. And the kind of developing this course and offering it as a kind of one-stop shop kind of place for people to come and find out more um, uh, seems kind of like a good way to consolidate what we've been doing, um, as well as reflecting the kind of experience that we'd have of working with people, um, running sessions around open licensing and Creative Commons um, uh, as well. Um, obviously, it's on an open license, so I'm hoping, you know, as we move forward, that people will obviously improve um, the course, um, as well as the improvements we're going to make um, as well. And then finally, um, full disclosure, but I did, uh, at the end of uh, 2019, I also participated in the Creative Commons for Educators um, course, so I was obviously familiar um, with the course material um, and, uh, and so on. Okay, so what did we do um, very briefly um, uh, so far? So the course currently um, is a six part remix of the original Creative Commons course. So if you're familiar with that, I think it's five weeks, if I remember correctly, or five units. Um, and what we've kind of done is we've created a standalone version. Um, so I mentioned it's part of the master training program. That means it will be kind of run, facilitated for around 25 of our um, participants. Um, but obviously we need a standalone version so that people can come and use um, the course uh, subsequently. Um, so obviously there's quizzes and reflection points as part of that course. Um, we've made it available obviously in Myanmar and English language um, versions and we're hosting it on um, Open Learn Create. Um, and essential to this is that we're hoping through the master training program and the activity within that um, we will develop the course further and I'll talk about that in a moment um, and also obviously we're making this available on a CC BY um, license. Just very briefly to show you um, the course structure, um, as I mentioned there's six kind of um, units or sections um, to the course, very much we've kind of started with copyright um, and this is uh, just really partly for onboarding kind of reasons, if you're familiar with the um, CC certificate um, you know, you kind of join the program having at least some um, knowledge um, or understanding around CC. Um, this may not be true for um, people uh, in the future, so for, for this course. So we've kind of started the onboarding around copyright um, instead and then kind of go on to introduce um, Creative Commons within uh, that context. We've also included a lot more um, We've included some of the material we developed as part of um, the project, so things around finding and evaluating OER, as well as remixing, and a lot more kind of um, step by step and detailed kind of um, uh, details around how to do um, particular things um, included in the course as part of this. And that was um, participant feedback um, from the people we've been working with around kind of preferences for these step by step kind of guides to. Um, guides to activity. And then finally, um, we've kind of uh, ended the course with kind of uh, looking at ideas of the way in which people could practically take that forward. And I'm hoping that will be something that we can improve on um, uh, and critically reflect on as part of what we're going to do uh, with uh, the facilitated run of the course. Okay, just very briefly, um, I've kind of already covered this, I think, really, but, um, you know, really, the course is about you know, the new Myanmar copyright law, um, and we worked with lawyers in Myanmar um, as well to better understand what that means um, as part of developing this. Um, you know, the kind of role of CC and open license material and its benefits to universities and colleges, and then also obviously your own kind of practice and um, supporting use of OER at your institution. So, how did we um, develop the course? This is kind of an ongoing, I mentioned we're kind of still uh, working on this currently, but um, we started work in spring of this year. Um, and from the get go, um, I wanted to kind of involve participants in that process. So um, held a kind of call to let people know, this is what we're thinking of doing. You know, do you think this is a good idea? Um, get some feedback um, around that. 
kind of put the original material for the CC cert for librarians um, uh, open for review. Obviously that was in um, English language, so we didn't get um, really uh, much feedback um, from that. And really ideally we probably would have translated that all into Myanmar language, which would have enabled more um, critique. Um, we're now doing that critique as part of um, this uh, work. So if we went slightly differently, um, maybe then would have been ideal, but um, as the course is still being developed, we'll, we'll hopefully get a lot more feedback going forward. Um, but we did do a lot of work around um, seeing what people wanted included in this kind of course. So we did a Facebook poll, um, we did a review of the original material, both by UK and Myanmar based um, project team members and other stakeholders. So particular thanks to Irene and Kuchner in um, IFL as well for um, working um, with us um, on this. Um, and then also um, uh, we had a discussion with a small group of Myanmar um, participants um, to talk about their experiences with OER and Creative Commons and that also helped shape um, the course um, and some of um, these colleagues also worked with Brian Mather's uh, visual thinkery to develop um, the picture so you can see some of these in the presentation as I move um, through that um, uh, as well so we have got some custom images um, for the course uh, and then finally, as I've already mentioned, we worked with um, uh, uh, lawyers in Myanmar um, around material on copyright and reused some of our own existing tied content. So um, in terms of contextualization, um, I've already mentioned translation and Myanmar um, examples, that kind of onboarding um, as well is really, I think, um, important thinking beyond just the tied project. Um, and um, to, have to, you know, how do we kind of, I think one of the questions when, when you kind of start working with folks is how do you um, contextualize and um, present something like Creative Commons um, and OER to, to people. So um, that kind of onboarding is really crucial. Um, illustrations have already mentioned, um, and also, you know, very much kind of um, having that dialogue with people around their preference for format and content. Um, I just want to pick up on um, the final two points really here around renewable assignments and critical engagement with the course. So one of the things that I'm um, kind of working on at the moment um, is the kind of uh, assessment piece really um, uh, and kind of building um, assignments to kind of both support the cascading that um, people have said that they'll be doing um, so by participating in the master training program there's an expectation that um, uh, that they'll um, um, and people want to kind of go back and share that with colleagues so by producing kind of um, slides or other materials to share with people um, this kind will hopefully support that um, as well as in a, you know enabling and supporting people to develop OER. I'm also hoping that from this will um, people will want to kind of share some of those things and that they will become part of a future iteration of the course so particularly around developing case studies about um, people's own practice um, as well and um, uh, I'm hoping that we'll be able to include some of those with people obviously people are happy to as part of um, what we're doing and then finally really fundamentally this critical engagement with the course to improve it um, you know um, this is really important it's it's this um, a lot more work to do and um, I'm hoping that we can continue to work with Myanmar colleagues to make the course even better than it is um, uh, yeah, currently. So finally, um, uh, just to say about next steps really, um, as you've got probably a, a gathered by now, um, this is very much an iterative kind of process, we're kind of just really at the start of this. Um, we're about to kind of launch our Myanmar and English language versions in December, which will be kind of um, be when we start the first facilitated run. And you start wrapping up. Thanks. Um, the first facilitated run. And then finally, um, in kind of March time, we'll be looking to reversion and update the course again then. So thank you very much um, for your time. And um, yeah, any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, we ran out of time for questions so uh, if you have any questions please uh, post them in the connect platform i, I shared the link in the in the chat and i am certain that uh, beck will post her slides also on there 
Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Beck. Um, uh, we can stop the recording.